Welcome r slash parents. Encounter with entitled parents in the pediatric emergency room. This happened yesterday. My three-year-old daughter was dexed with bacterial pneumonia and we ended up in the emergency room because she was struggling to breath. Pneumonia is very serious. She was put on a an nebulizer and O2 and given and forth for more meds while we waited for a room to open up in the PICU. The emergency room was pretty full. The rooms are small and you share them. There is a curtain that divides them. There are no doors, just another curtain. Around 4 p.m. a family arrives with mom, dad, five-year-old daughter. The mom briefly looks in on my side of the room and could see my toddler laying in the bed hooked to machines within fourth. It's obvious that this isn't a stub toe. So I can't help but hear the parents explaining why their kid's in the addition. Stomach pain. Meanwhile the kid is asking for something to eat. She sounds quite perky. Parents insist she has a kidney infection. Whatever, I don't know her history, not interested. So my daughter was given a steroid through her nebulizer to help open her airways. Her O2, which they wanted 90 or above, kept dipping down into the low 80s making an alarm sound. The nebulizer makes some noise and the side effect is hyperactivity so my extremely sick kid was medically wired as hell. Within 30 minutes of arriving the entitled parents call for a nurse and ask for a private room because their daughter needs to rest somewhere quiet. Meanwhile their daughter was blasting Ryan's toy review from her tablet and loudly demanding chocolate chip cookies and milk. The nurse explains that there is no private rooms in the emergency room. My daughter then starts having a coughing fit which is scary as her O2 drops off and she chokes until she vomits. I had two nurses in trying to help by suctioning her and patting her back. I'm trying to help her. My daughter is turning blue. I hear the entitled mother ask the nurse how long are they going to be expected to listen to that. Afterwards my daughter was wiped out and was crying a little and the entitled mom rang for her nurse again and asked again for some place quiet so her little girl can rest. Her daughter was making a lot of noise playing with something. Then they started playing with the lights. The room has a switch to control the lights on each side and then a master switch to cut all the lights. My daughter is afraid of the dark. The entitled dad cuts the lights for the room, making it quite dark with the curtain over the doorway drawn. I tell my husband to turn on the lights on our side, which he does. The entitled mom calls her nurse to complain that it's too bright for her little girl to sleep. It's 5 p.m. The nurse explained that they are welcome to shut the lights off on their side, but they have to leave our side alone. They complain a bit about how ill their daughter is. Meanwhile my daughter is drowning in her own lungs, which I'm sure they know as you can hear everything. Then nurse leaves, and they shut the lights off for the entire room again. My husband immediately turns ours on and calls through the curtain that we need our lights on. Silence. A nurse comes in to attend to my daughter's fourth and they attempt to get her force us to have the lights off. A nurse basically tells them to knock it off. Then they start pushing for more space. They attempt to push our chair away where my husband is sitting. They put their their chair way over on our side of the room, pushing the curtain into our faces essentially. My husband pushes it back. They call and complain. Rinse and repeat. Finally a room in the PICU opens up, and we are told that we would be admitted in an hour. Entitled parents complain that they asked for a private room first. The nurse explains that we are being admitted, not being given a private room in the addition. The app demand they be admitted first because their daughter is so much sicker. The nurse says that there is no reason for their daughter to be admitted as she is just constipated and as soon as she poops they will be free to go. The parents start freaking out. So that's my story of how the parents of a little girl who needed to take a shit felt they were more important than a little girl with pneumonia. Edit. First of all, my daughter is doing much better. Thanks for all the well wishes. Second, many of you say you would have caused some sort of scene, or you would have acted aggressively, or called them on their behavior. I worked in an emergency room for 4 years. Unruly parents were often removed from the emergency room without their child. I kept my head down and took it because the care my child was receiving to keep her heart beating was more important. Imagine that. My daughter was never in danger. 
Her nurses were attentive, helpful, friendly, responsive. I would have taken whiplashes from Satan himself if it meant my daughter getting care. The petty complaints and power play coming from the other side of the curtain didn't affect my child at all. The nurses had their number. They were handling it. Nap, not big talk. I'd have bunt. I once flipped shit on some racist cow who was loudly complaining on the phone about the treatment she'd gotten in the air while still there and repeatedly used the n-word. After about the third time I heard it, with a black family with a small child in the room directly opposite her, I spoke up, called her out, and actually got into a heated argument with her, through the curtain dividing us. I don't even remember what I said, but I'll let her know how out of line and bullshit her behavior was. She ended up being escorted out of the ed, she had already been treated, but wasn't satisfied with her diagnosis, or whatever, and the PA apologized to me profusely. Afterward, as I was leaving, she was sitting in the hall outside of the ed filing a complaint against the PA over the phone, so I called in, and gave a positive account of what had happened, to cancel her out. Now, had my child been involved in any of that, it would have been me being escorted out, because I'd have gone nuclear. Period. We had an experience similar to yours. My son had his tonsils and adenoids taken out in January 2018. At 3 a.m. some lady comes barging into our room, they were shared rooms, talking super loud, while the nurses got her child settled. Later in the day she was talking on the phone, and complaining that they should get a private room and we should be moved. I just thought to myself lady we were here first. She kept leaving her poor baby to go, so god knows what. He would just lay there, and cry for her, it was so saddening. Luckily we only had to stay two days. I will never understand how someone who seems to be a functional adult and not comprehend how Tridge works. I once had a woman who's old enough to know better son stuck a bean up his nose throw a fit because I was treated before him. I was in an aphylactic shock. A pregnant woman from a car accident was brought in and the M yelled about her cutting the line also. The Tridge nurse told her off and threatened to call the cops. The kicker her son could have been treated and gone, but mom was insisting that a specific doctor come in because the air doctor wasn't an specialist. The doctor returned their call and told them that the kid could either be treated by the air doc or sit there and rot till Monday. This was a Friday or Saturday night because he was on a weekend trip with his family and not driving multiple hours back to deal with the bean up a kid's nose. I hope your little girl feels better steroids always kick my butt. I don't remember this very clearly, because I was terribly ill at the time, but I was rushed to the hospital age 13, after passing out from massive blood loss. They had to give me two blood transfusions before operating, because I'd lost so much. So I was lying in bed in my shared room with the needle in the crook of my arm. They didn't even try to use my hand veins, because they couldn't see them very well, and I'm on my second bag. But my arm keeps cramping up and it really hurts. So I keep bending it to alleviate the pain. The nurse doesn't want me to do this, because then the blood kind of pools in my arm, creating a big lump. So my mom is holding my arm down, to keep me from bending it, and I'm moaning in pain, kinda fighting her. I'm crying, my mom's crying, it's miserable. This whole time the other child's parents and grandparents are seated about 3 feet away, talking and laughing super loudly. And get this, their kid isn't even in the room. She's out getting some tests done. But her whole ass family is having a freaking reunion in the same room as an almost dying 13 year old, making all kinds of ruckus, and driving my mom up the wall. Some people. When I was an EMT I ran across people like this from time to time. They would call an ambulance for something super trivial with their kid despite several cars in the drive and their kid being well enough to use CRGP or go to the after hours clinic. In my country we can refuse to transport, if not deemed necessary, but it's quicker to actually transport than to spend time arguing with Mr. and Mrs. Karen, and then have the hour follow up when they complain. They would almost always tell me they called, because they didn't want to have to wait in the waiting room like all the other times they took their mildly ill child to the addition. I'd smile and nod, and then enjoy the response when the Tridge nurses, gatekeepers with spines of steel, and no fucks left to give, boot them right back into the waiting room. I'm just sorry that you had to end up in a room right next to one of these people. 
they should have a separate area for people like this, so they can annoy each other, and not people with actual sick kids. I hope your daughter is doing okay too. Ugh. So, I have a bunch of chronic illnesses, my genetic disorder, Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, generally comes with a bunch of secondary conditions, and have spent an absurd amount of time in emergency departments, and literally every single time I'm there, there is always at least one entitled parent being a pain in everyone's ass about something. It gets weird fast, when there's more than one, cause they either, but heads or team up, rarely anything in between, if they're aware of one another. When they butt heads, it always turns into the suffering Olympics, with them competing over whose child is sicker or more severely injured. Word from the chronically ill, no one wins in the suffering Olympics. Competing over who has it worse is fucking asinine, and it drives me up the goddamn wall. One time, in the bay next to mine, there was this really sweet, well-behaved kid, maybe Atio, who'd fallen out of a treehouse. There were concerns about a head injury, cause she lost consciousness and her arm later turned out to be broken in two places. Despite obviously being pretty scared and in a lot of pain, she tanked it all like an absolute champ and didn't even complain when they stuck a cannula in the back of her hand. She cried, but toughed it out without any complaints at all. Her dad was awesome too, doing his best to keep her distracted and kept telling her how proud he was of her. It was all pretty heartwarming. Some nurses kept popping their heads in to check on her, cause head injury, and were being really sweet, helping keep her spirits up. Naturally, the M on the other side of the sweet kids bay didn't like that one bit, lol. Someone else's child getting more attention than hers? The audacity. She kept complaining about the girl and her dad to basically anyone walking past, even had an I don't work here, lady moment, at one point, making up all kinds of shit, though thankfully, the staff were having none of it. M was insisting her son had flu and pneumonia, which is why this post reminded me of this particular story, and a nurse got so sick of her shit, that I heard him snap at her, your son has a cold, maybe tonsillitis, at most. There are seriously ill people on both sides of you. You need to stop with this palaver, or there will be consequences for you. And he walked off, leaving her stunned into silence, lol. I couldn't see either of them, but like to imagine she was doing that shocked, opening and closing, fish mouth thing, lol. Her son was discharged pretty soon after that, and when the doctor came to tell them, M threatened legal action, cause they weren't taking her baby seriously. Unfortunately, emergency departments are like, entitled parent central. P.S. I hope your daughter is feeling better and recovers a sap. I've had pneumonia a few times and it's awful.